everyone. Welcome to SNHU. Uh, we look forward to having you all here today, and we're just looking forward to all the things you're going to do um, as new students at SNHU. Uh, this is known as the Making Good Connections webinar. And with this webinar, it's really to help uh, get you connected, right, with uh, different resources across uh, the institution. We recognize that being at an online institution, uh, this may be uh, your first time in online education, or maybe you've been in uh, this kind of uh, education uh, before, uh, but we really want to help you to understand how to navigate the resources and supports here. So that's the goal here today. Uh, put some names with some faces and some faces with some actual departments across our great campus. So we have some amazing colleagues here to help walk you through uh, what you would need to be successful along with some of the various um, services that we have for you. So those resources that I spoke of, um, and also forgive me, my name is Dr. James Winfield. Um, I serve as the Associate Dean uh, for First Year Experience and Retention Strategies uh, here at SNHU. And essentially what that job title means is that my job is to help you throughout your first year uh, to ensure that you have resources to support you along with um, just understanding the navigation of all the various nuances of what's here. Uh, so back to those resources uh, that I mentioned. So we'll have representatives from, uh, from student involvement to talk Talk about uh, SNU Connect, um, a platform that we have for you to get engaged with. Uh, we're going to have individuals from our career services team. Uh, academic support, tutoring is always needed and essential uh, for you all. Um, and we look forward to having a conversation about how to navigate those supports. Uh, uh, the Shapiro Library has an abundance of online resources. Uh, alumni engagement. Uh, so it's important to be uh, an active student, but after you graduate as well, giving back to the institution, whether it is, you know, via time or uh, mentorship, different opportunities, uh, we want to make sure that you're aware of that and how you can connect with alumni as well. And then SNHU 107, which is a course uh, that we have here at SNHU. We'll talk a little bit about that um, and just make sure that you understand if you're taking that course, uh, what to expect. And then we'll hear from uh, a great representative from one of, from our peer mentorship program. So we have that uh, service here for you all as well. So I already introduced myself, as I mentioned, I'm Dr. James Winfield. Uh, my students just call me Dr. J. Um, as I mentioned, I'm an associate dean and I also teach uh, here at SNHU. But you're gonna get a lot of information uh, during your time at SNHU, in your time you know, being a student in college. But there's a couple of things I want you to remember. And if you don't remember anything about, you know, uh, where to go and so forth. I want you to remember these principles, right? And that is uh, persist, engage, network. Uh, also, pen, uh, which is a play on our mascot known as the penman. So, persist. I want you to engage. I want you to persist from term to term um, and just continue to progress through. So, so. So seek those resources and supports to help you out as you're going through and know that you're not doing this alone. I want you to engage uh, with the various uh, individuals across campus, whether it's your, um, your instructors. Uh, we're going to talk about engagement opportunities for you to get connected with other peers and social groups and whatnot. So I want you to engage fully uh, in the things that are here for you. And then network. A network with your peers, network with your faculty, network with your advisors. Uh, because think about this. Let's say, for instance, you are close to graduation and then you realize that you want to go into a graduate degree program or you just need a, a recommendation for a job. You need to have that network. So making sure that you have positive relationships and good impressions uh, with these individuals is so helpful for you as you go through your academic career. So remember, PIN, Persist, Engage, Network. So FY101, uh, which is your gateway to SNHU, uh, that is um, your orient official orientation that resides within Brightspace. Uh, so just in the chat, uh, you can just put if you've completed uh, FYE 101 or if you started. If not, just something to go ahead and, and put on your checklist to go ahead and get started. Uh, this will also help you uh, to understand what to expect. So 
how to navigate Brightspace, which is where your classes will be. And that is also known as a learning management system. So um, many of you have probably worked on worked on some of those. Um, if you're at, a, at another institution, um, some individuals back in even other high, some of their high schools, they utilize platforms like this. But this is where you will engage in discussions, where you will submit assignments. Uh, so with all that, FY101 is uh, really a great way to help you understand what to expect as mentioned. It's not an actual course. It's not graded. It's just something for you to go into and understand, like I said, the connections, the resources, the support systems. So some of the things we're going to talk about here, it'll probably be re reiterated and actually give you a hands-on experience by going through that. So what I'm going to do now is hand it over to one of my great colleagues, uh, Mandy, who works as Director of Student Involvement. So handing it over to Mandy. Perfect. Hi, everybody. How are we doing out there? Um, I'm really excited to kick us off today. So James, if you want to go to the next slide, I'll begin my presentation. Um, so I want to start off by saying that a lot of the work that the offices that are here today to share information uh, with you, um, we're, we work together, we intertwine, um, but I'm excited to be the first one um, to kick us off today. Um, PSA, I'm going to be going over a lot of information. I'm pretty sure I'm the most long winded of the group. So bear with me. Try to hold your questions until the end. I'm going to be posting a lot of helpful links at the end, but the chat moves very quickly. So if you can hold your questions, I promise you I will be in the chat and I'll answer those for you. So why get involved? We found that over time, the more students get involved, the more they realize the opportunities they have in reference to what is available at Southern New Hampshire University. And a little caveat here, sometimes you'll hear me call it SNHU, sometimes you might hear me say SNU, Southern New Hampshire University, all of those mean the same thing. Um, so just some fun acronym knowledge for you all. So at SNHU, it's an opportunity for you to take your SNU journey to be not just about the classes that you take, but also about the relationships that you make. So just like you all were doing in the chat before the presentation, in SNHU Connect, we're hoping that people find uh, ways to relate, find things they have in common with somebody else that may be taking a class thousands of miles away, or someone who may actually be taking a class in the same city or town as them, which is pretty cool. It is an online private space that is only for SNU students. So students in our programs and our competency-based programs. And a lot of times people will find SNHU Connect, but they're not quite sure how to utilize it, what it means, how to navigate it. So I'm going to go into a little detail about what it looks like, which is pretty similar to a lot of other social media platforms. So if James, if you could advance the slide for me. All right, perfect. So this is our SNHU Connect page on my SNHU, which helps you log into SNHU Connect. So like I said, SNHU Connect is a community platform where you can make new friends with people from all over the country and even the world. Hopefully you'll meet students in different programs as well as students in your programs as well um, and encourage each other along your journey here at SNHU. So we would encourage you to log in to the online community, complete your profile, introduce yourself. It is not required, but it's a great option to help build those connections and community at SNHU. Um, this is an important note. Um, if you have just registered for your classes, you will get access to SNHU Connect about a week or so after you've registered for that first class. So if today you're trying to log and it's not working for you, think back to when you were registered for that first class, give it a few more days, and then if after a week it's still not working for you, reach out to us at connect at snhu.edu, and I'll put that in the chat after, but it does take a week after you're registered to get access. Um, so that's an important note to remember. Um, so, and of course, if you have any questions, you can always email us too, but that's the first thing that I would suggest that you do. James, next slide, please. So what else can you do on SNHU Connect? So you can meet peers, you can build your network. Um, if you visit the advanced people search, um, SNHU Connect is a pretty awesome space because once you enter a combination of search criteria in the fields, such as home city, state, degree program, click search, it'll populate all the people that meet that criteria. You can then click on their profile to learn more about them, follow their feed, or find their email to connect with them. Um, again, similar to, very similar 
to what you all were doing in the chat earlier today. So if you look on the left of the screen, you're going to see a blue avatar, and that is someone who hasn't updated their picture yet or profile or added a picture. And if I could share anything with you today, if you're going to utilize SNHU Connect, add a picture. It shows people that you're a real person, that you're there, that you want to engage and connect with them. People know you're approachable and that you want to use to connect for its purpose of building community. Um, you'll also see what students have entered into their profile. So again, make sure to complete your profile so that other students can find you. And like I said, you'll get access a week after you're registered for your first class. James, next slide, please. So question for you all. Has anybody joined one of our online clubs? You may not even know that they exist, but they do. Has anybody joined or heard of our online clubs? I'm going to pause. You can put it in the chat. OK, look them over, followed a few groups. OK, that's OK. That's OK. You're going to learn about them today. So we have lots of online clubs for you to join. We also have groups, which I will go over as well. So we have educational clubs, social clubs, university sponsor clubs. All of our clubs are free to join. You can get involved as soon as today. And in order for you to join, all you have to do is email the club or post in their SNU Connect page. So all of these clubs have a unique email addresses that are located on the top of their SNU Connect page, and they all have a unique SNU Connect page. So once you're in SNU Connect, you can go to the Groups tab at the top, search for different clubs, and you'll find the information in there in order to post on the feed, officially join the roster, but you don't have to. You can go in there and just browse and look around. You can attend an event before you officially get on the roster. It's totally up to you and it's an optional for an option for you if that's something that you want to pursue. It is a leadership opportunity as well because all of these students have uh, student clubs have club cabinets where they need presidents, vice presidents, secretaries. So they have elections twice a year. So if you want to get involved in a leadership sort of way, that's an option for you as well. You want to join the club first. So this is our list of clubs. Um, we suggest as a new student, try joining one or two, see how that feels at first, how much time and investment they take, um, and make sure you have a solid routine for your, for your coursework before you do. Um, but you can add more from there. Um, and again, you can attend their virtual events through SNU Connect. Um, they're all hosted in Teams as well, so very similar to this platform that we're in. All of these groups try to meet at least once a month, and some of them will do some joint events as well. So again, an option for you all. It is not required, but if you are interested in getting involved in a co-curricular way, clubs are a great way to do so. Next slide, please, James. All right, Club Hub. So this is our virtual lounge, also a page in SNU Connect. So if you do in the search, type in the search field Club Hub, that'll bring you right to the Club Hub page. So it's our virtual club lounge where our clubs and organizations share their events, their contests, their meetings, and so much more. So make sure to check that out. I will also highlight a few other pages that I don't have slides for, but I think if you're interested, I think a lot of you will probably be interested in SNU swag. What's SNU swag? That might be a shirt or a journal or a tote. So we have flash giveaways frequently in a page called SNHU Spirit in SNU Connect. So if you're interested and you would like to win some swag, pay attention to that page. Um, and if you comment on one of the posts that's a flash giveaway, you could win some swag, which is pretty awesome. Our clubs also give away swag at their events. So if you're looking for some SNU gear or something to have SNHU representation, these pages are a great way to do so. And we also have an SNH2 events page in SNU Connect where you can find all of the virtual in-person events that are occurring. So lots of fun and different ways to interact in SNH2 Connect. All right, James, next slide, please. All right, we also have five honor societies for online students. So if you qualify for any of these honor societies, you will get an invitation once a year to your SNHU email. This is where I like to pause and do another PSA on making sure to check your SNHU email multiple times throughout the week. That is the primary and most secure way anybody from SNHU is going to reach out to you. Usually if you reach out to us with a personal email, we will respond back to your SNHU email. So please, please, please get in the habit of checking your SNHU email. It is so, so important. Your faculty staff will all reach you there. So if you do qualify for an honor society, that will go, that invitation will go to your SNHU email. Um, the only society that invites twice a year is the National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, there is a one-time lifetime membership fee for all of these honor societies. So as long as you meet the criteria, check your SNHU inbox for the invitation. Um, 
you would be able to apply to join the honor society. You do not have to nominate yourself. You do not have to pay the fee if you don't want to and join the honor society. It is completely optional, but it is an option for you if you wanted to join one. Um, you can opt in or out, like I said. Some are for undergraduate, some are for graduate, some are for specific majors. Um, and we also have group pages, pages in all of the, all group spaces, excuse me, for all of these honor societies in SHU Connect. So if you wanted to go in to SHU Connect and learn more about Alpha Sigma Lambda, you can search for their page and find out more information there. Um, so a lot of great information is on those pages as well. Um, so again, please make sure you're checking that student email, but no need to nominate yourself. If you qualify, you will get an email to your SHU email. Next slide, please, James. OK, events. This is exciting stuff. So we do try to host as many events as we can, and this is one of the areas that we join forces with our, with our alumni engage, engagement office on. So we love to have fun events, allow students to network, whether that's virtually or in person. Um, and we also try to invite family and friends when we're able to do so. So some of these pictures here, we've gone to um, Red Bull Stadium. The bottom picture is New Orleans, a meetup I hosted when I was at a conference there. Um, so we try to find opportunities for events in real life and virtually. Um, we do meetups, socials, and we also have a virtual leadership conference every year called SNHU Leads. So mark your calendar in your brain. End of March is usually when that occurs, but that's a really great completely online opportunity for you to participate in as well. Homecoming and Global Days of Service. Um, alumni will be chatting about later today. Um, we share all of these on our events calendar. I'll post a link for that as well. And all of these things exist as a way to help you connect as online students. Um, Again, we do regional pop up events in different pockets of the United States. Um, if you know, spoiler alert, if anybody lives in San Antonio, we may be coming there in September. So just keep an eye on your SHU email. You will get emails about all of these events to your SHU email as well. So there's multiple places. The SNU events page in SNU Connect, your SHU email, my SNU, the events calendar. There's a lot of different ways. Again, these are all still optional to you, but exist as a way for you to get involved, network, and build community. Next slide, please, James. So learning communities, Melanie's going to talk a little bit about that those later as well, but they exist as and they're set up as spaces to help you connect with others. There are some affinity groups on this page as well that you can participate in. Some are career, some are social, some are student support related. You can also find information on the Student Engagement Council, which is another leadership opportunity for students. There's eligibility and criteria there. That group meets with staff from SNHU to provide support and feedback on their experience here, um, and they are assigned groups to engage with in our SNHU Connect community, which is pretty cool. So next slide, please, James. So again, I told you I was long winded. I'm going to post lots of links in the chat for you. If I missed any questions, feel free. I'll be in the chat answering those. But here's a picture of an event that we hosted in California. We love to get our students together in person and online. We can't wait for you to attend a future event, participate in SNU Connect. Um, and again, I look forward to answering your questions in the chat. You will see me back in a little bit. I am pinch hitting for our Allie and our alumni team. Um, so I'll be back in a little bit to share a little bit about the alumni office. Office, but again, so nice to meet you and so happy to have you here. Thanks. Awesome. I'm happy to jump in here. Um, first of all, the, the comments in the chat box are great. Keep them coming. So um, first and foremost, so excited to be here with all of you this afternoon. Uh, my name is Alyssa and I am a career engagement partner here with the SNHU Career Services team. So my team primarily focuses on helping connect our students with career services and all of our amazing career resources early on uh, in their programs. Um, so for those of you who have not yet heard about career services, we are a free career advising and career exploration service for uh, currently enrolled online students and a free lifetime service for all of our graduates and alumni. So I am going to talk a little bit about career services and how it can be a benefit uh, to you now. So if we could go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, most of our students that are here are, of course, attending college for a lot of career related reasons. Um, so either they want to explore maybe a new career or want to advance within their current one. And so you might not realize it now, but your SNHU Career Services team offers many more support services than just providing job postings. 
Um, our team can partner with you to help you outline your individual and unique career plan during your college program. However, it does seem that most students wait until graduation or even after graduating to start connecting with us. And we understand it could definitely be intimidating, sometimes even overwhelming to think about your career plans. Trust me, everybody feels this way, but our career services team can help facilitate your next steps no matter where you are in your career journey. And you'll likely get the best results if you connect with our team and our career resources early on and much earlier than just your graduation. And I do understand it might not seem like a priority right now while you're getting started or you're just going through your coursework, um, but really I can't emphasize enough the importance of reaching out to our team early on in your program to start planning your potential career paths that really suit your needs. So next slide, please. So whether you're starting a, a new career or advancing again in your current position, our team can assist you in a variety of different ways. So why start now? Well, first and foremost, engaging with SNHU Career Services team is free. And remember, we can provide the support to you for life. So it's a free service that's available to you while you're in school and after you graduate. Additionally, our career advisors can help you with anything related to career development and job search. And that includes exploring career planning options, going over skills assessments, helping you with a resume and cover letter, uh, interview preparation, if you're interested in um, getting some hands-on experience with your social media presence, and really just helping pointing you towards the right tools and resources just for you. Additionally, Handshake uh, is a fabulous resource. Handshake is SNHU's private job board for SNHU students and alumni, where our nationwide employer partners will post full-time and part-time jobs, as well as full-time and part-time internship opportunities targeting talented students like all of you. You'll also see career events like career fairs and employer networking events that are posted in Handshake, which students can register to attend. And I would highly recommend all of you log in to, uh, to Handshake. You simply just use your SNHU email. You can start setting up your profile, start browsing opportunities to get started. Uh, additionally, uh, internships are highly recommended to help you gain some valuable industry experience that relates to your course of study. So whether you're interested in receiving potentially academic credit for an internship or not, we do actually have a dedicated team of internship advisors who are ready and willing to help you. So our online students complete what's called the pre-internship survey or PINs for short to get started. And then once you receive your survey responses, one of our internship administrators from that team will reach out to you with more information and next steps. So again, I'll be posting some of that information in the chat shortly. And of course, at the end of the day, making connections is a huge part of your career journey. So by utilizing these resources, you can work with us and uh, partner with a very supportive team. Um, it can help you connect with employers about job or internship opportunities or connect with them at specific events. And again, it's all about learning how, how you can pursue your own individual career goals. So again, if you're unsure of how to start exploring your skills, your career interests, or you just need help with your resume, or maybe you are contemplating that internship, our team can help you. Next slide, please. And there are a number of ways you can access the SNHU Career Services website. So one of the first steps we encourage students to do is log into their MySNU. And what you'll do is you'll click on the three lines that are located at the uh, top left hand side of the screen and you'll see an opportunity where all the menus will drop down and you'll see the Career Services tab and that will take you directly to our website. And our website can also actually be accessed right through Brightspace and other links that are included in your courses. Next slide, please. And so this is what our career services homepage looks like. So clicking on the first link of that homepage, you can explore uh, the career explorations page. You can explore pages like job search help, internships and experience, et cetera. So really on this page, as you navigate and scroll down, you'll see tons of career planning, exploration resources. There's even some bits and pieces that are organized by major uh, that again, that can help you build confidence in your career search abilities. You'll also see some other areas to explore. Uh, again, you'll see that job search help, internship experiences, and you'll see postings that, again, include direct hyperlinks to Handshake, our SNHU Career YouTube channel, as well as Skills First, which is our free skills assessment platform that helps students build resumes, cover letters, and portfolios. It's a pretty awesome site. So again, please feel free to explore our site and take a look at our variety of career resources. Next slide, please. 
And of course, uh, there is just an abundance of information out there regarding our SNU career team. And we've compiled a lot of that information um, through our SNU YouTube channel. So again, you'll uh, find hundreds of career videos and recorded employer and alumni presentations through our SNU career YouTube channel. Additionally, on your Brightspace homepage, you'll be able to view monthly what we're calling in the know career series announcements. So they will be posted there. And again, these announcements will keep you in Informed of upcoming career events and timely career resources. Next slide, please. So uh, in closing, I really, again, can't emphasize enough the amazing career support that is available to you through our SNU Career Services team. And so you might be asking yourselves, well, what can I do right now to get some career help? So some simple steps highlighted here could be one, to check out our Career Services website. You can also contact our career advising team anytime for help. Uh, you could also try logging into Handshake and browsing those career opportunities in our career events, or reach out again directly to our internship advising team. And again, I'll be sure to add all of these resources here in the chat box shortly, but I really appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you all so much. And at this point, I will hand it off to our next presenter. Well, hey, everybody. I am Melanie Shop, and I get to step in here for our fabulous academic support team. Um, I'm actually one of the faculty here at the university. I teach in SNH 107 and IDS 105 for anybody that might have those classes on their fall schedule um, coming up here for start day on August 28th. James, go ahead. So, Y'all, I have to tell you that you're going to hear from so many incredible resources and people here today, and I hope that that just makes you want to connect with the university resources for your success. Um, the academic support team has so many services that are free, F-R-E-E, -E, um, for our students to just really help you be successful in your classroom. One of the things I like to point out is that you can always find the academic support team directly from your Brightspace classrooms. You will see a link at the top when you log into Brightspace into your classes, but you also will see another link if you go underneath learning modules and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see academic support. Either one of those places, you'll be able to find the team. And when you click on academic support, it pulls up this lovely menu. There are so many services for you to explore. So I encourage you to get in there when you get a chance, click around, see what might benefit you. And the other awesome thing about the academic support team resources is so much of it is online. So you can schedule when things are convenient for you. You can make appointments when it works for you. There's um, even things where you can submit your writing assignments, like discussions, projects, journal assignments to the team. They look things over, give you some feedback, and it's all within 24 hours. So it's an absolutely awesome service to use. James, go ahead. Um, as you guys get used to like working with the academic support team, one of the big um, heavy hitters that students like to use in addition to the writing feedback um, services is meeting with um, different tutors. So there's two different kinds of tutoring with the academic support team. One is 24 seven tutoring. So it's convenient. It's what works for your schedule. There's not an appointment needed. You can just fill out this little form once you log in to the academic support team pages and you can schedule something for you that's gonna work for your schedule. How awesome is that? Because everybody has a million things happening, right? A lot of you guys are probably you know, nervous coming to school and how you're gonna add this into your already busy lives. And I'm telling you, these services are just at your fingertips and they make it so much easier. So 24 seven tutoring, no appointment needed, convenient for you, peer tutors. This is where you might need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support or some extra guidance on specific subjects. So these are SNHU students who are actually hired into this role. They've been in their shoes, in your shoes. This is their area of expertise, and they're really knowledgeable and supportive about your online experience, but also helping you get the information that you need in a way that works best for you. So if you're kind of nervous about coming back, um, and you're thinking about like, gosh, I haven't taken math forever, or I never was that great at science, or oh my gosh, I have to write academically. You mean I can't say LOL and have all these text abbreviations in academic writing? I'm a little nervous. You have support and services that are available to you for your support and your success. So 
I encourage you to explore these menus very carefully, y'all. Go ahead, James. Um, the other service that a lot of students love to utilize here at the university is an academic coach. So an academic coach is somebody here at SNHU that really meets with you one-on-one -on -one where you are at. This is more of a long-term relationship. This is somebody that you would meet with from week to week, and you would be able to plan your schedule with them. They talk about your goals, kind of where you're at, what you want to work on, the subjects that you might be struggling in or you're nervous about. And this is something that can be kind of more of a long-term relationship um, to really help you navigate your classes, your schedule, and really be successful at the end of the day. So those are kind of just some three quick little areas. You got 24-7 tutoring, easy, kind of on demand. You have the peer tutors that are in there to kind of help with specific things. And then you have the academic coaches. Now the academic coaches, the schedules can be busy, so it can take a little bit longer to get in with them, but don't hesitate to fill out the forms, get the information in, because they will get back to you. Go ahead, James. And again, I see some questions about, you know, like how much does this cost? Nothing, you're an SNHU student. This is what is here for you in your success. Um, when you guys look into the academic coaching, there is a quick survey that you'll fill out when you fill out the form, just so they can get to know a little bit about you, kind of what you're looking for and make sure that this would be a match for you to actually meet with an academic coach. Because sometimes students just don't realize like, oh, I could have that quickly answered or do I need that more one-on-one -on -one time? So just know that those pieces are available for you um, and I encourage you to check them out. Go ahead, James. Um, written feedback. So this is, one of students' favorite things about the academic support team. How many of you are a little bit nervous about academically writing? Anybody? Working on those projects, those discussions, those journals. Y'all are not alone, I promise you. Everybody's always a little bit nervous. And even me, myself, somebody that teaches, like when I have to remind myself like, oh, I have to capitalize the word I. I gotta spell things out, right, y'all? Like that's just how it works. So the written feedback allows you to send in SNHU assignments, okay? It has to be a university assignment. Things like journals, discussions, projects, papers. You can actually submit them and the academic support team looks them over for more making sure you meet the scope of the assignment. They're not gonna be grammatically checking all the things, but they do look at pieces and give you ideas of where you can improve in your writing, making sure that you're um, answering the content questions, things along those, si those lines. And it really helps you just streamline your writing and get used to things. And it gives you that second, that like second set of eyes on your writing to make sure that you didn't miss something. And I know that my students have always told me when they utilize the written feedback services through academic support, they just feel more confident turning in their writing assignments. So this is something you can fill out, you submit online, you don't have to talk to anybody, you don't have to do anything. Um, you submit it and you'll get feedback within 24 hours. Usually it's only about 12 hours, which is really awesome. Go ahead, James. All right. Lots of workshops. I know many of you have mentioned that you're nervous, you're trying to kind of get back in the swing of things, you've been out of school for a while, or this is your very first time as a college student, or you're somewhere in between. There are so many workshops available to you through the academic support team. I mean, anything from writer's block to discussion board writing to you're just like new to SNHU, there is so many workshops available to you. Check out the schedule. Click on book now and it's when it works best for you. So, so many things that are here just for you and your support. Go ahead, James, next slide. All right, so that's everything academic support. I encourage you once you get access to your Brightspace classes, definitely go through the academic support menu and I'm gonna turn it over to one of our wonderful librarians. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's good to be here. Um, <laughs> Shardier, that's me. My name is Shannon Shardier. Um, I'm one of our directors of information literacy at the Shapiro Library, here to kind of give a brief overview of the library, what we have to offer. Um, same as academic support, all of this is part of your tuition. It is free to you, so make sure that you're getting your bang for your buck because we have a lot of resources. Um, James, if you could do the slide. Thank you. Um, so if you haven't been there already, oh yay, Jessica, woohoo, she's already checked out books, awesome. 
Um, if you haven't been to the library homepage yet, this is what it looks like. You can access it from your Brightspace course. Um, so a couple of things we always like to point out just navigating the page is that big yellow chat 24 seven with a librarian button right at the top. So we have a librarian available at all times, no matter what. So we have a team of librarians that are in house. We've got SNHU librarians and then they work their hours and when they go to sleep at night, we turn on a 24 seven service of trained degreed librarians all around the world. So if you're like the two in the morning person that just that's when you get your best work done, but nobody else is awake during that time. Um, we do you do have access to a librarian. So if you're doing research and you're struggling finding keywords or articles or anything like that, um, that would be the time to click that button and just connect with a librarian and they can help run you through our resources and get you what you need. Um, so we've got chat, we've got email. Um, our phones are actually going away. We're, we're, we're changing our systems as we speak because change is constant over here at SNHU, um, but chat and email probably the best way to go at this point. Um, we do have the big search box in the middle there is our multi search, so it searches the majority of our databases. So I often recommend that one for kind of your starting out searches. Um, it's a great, great place to kind of get broad information. We have a lot of research starters that come up in there for broad topics, um, so that's really great. We do have access to Libby, by the way, so if you all want to connect to us there, you can. I'm looking at the chat. Um, underneath the multi search is our FAQ box. So FAQs are, you know, frequently asked questions, things we get a lot of citation questions through the library because we house all of our citation guides and stuff. Um, so frequently asked questions, some things might be, you know, how do I cite a TED talk in APA or something like that? Um, but it's not all library necessarily. Like, well, yeah, so there's like, you know, we get, we get questions about the bookstore, for example, and how to get your books through them. F Type in bookstore and you'll see a drop down for an FAQ that'll show you that. Um, another thing you can do is you can connect your library account to Google Scholar, which if you've if you've not heard of Google Scholar, it's basically an all academic side of Google. So if you're more comfortable kind of searching with the Google interface, it's nice to connect your library account there and then anything we have is linked on the right hand side and you can access it. Um, so if you type Google into the FAQ box at the bottom there, um, an FAQ will pop up and give you step by step instructions on how to do something like that. Um, so lots of good stuff and I think I'm ready to hop to the next slide. Yay. OK, so um, you might have seen this on the other page. You've got your um, it's the uh, quick links box kind of on the left hand side. So for more information about all of our resources, you can click on the getting started guide. Um, I mentioned that the multi search was on the library homepage. The A to Z database list right there on the top is the individualized listing of every database we have. So I saw that we had some business majors, for example. You might need to do a SWOT analysis at some point. You're probably going to want a business specific database to get that exact information. You would go to the A to Z database list, check out the business databases and off you go. We have education, we have criminal justice, all of them are separated by subject matter. You can just do a little drop down menu and you have your um, access right there. We also have the citing your sources guide, which has great information on citation, lots of help there. Um, if you are not local or even if you are, if you have a book or an article or you find something, but we don't have access to it, we can do interlibrary loan and get it from another institution. So in theory, there should be no limitations on what we can get for you. It's very rare when we can't find something. So if you want, you can do interlibrary loan. Um, but I would definitely recommend clicking into the getting started guide. It's very robust. It's got a lot of good information about research. I, I saw a lot of folks are first generation. A lot of folks are coming back to college after a long time. Um, database searching has very much changed. <laughs> Finding resources has very much changed. Um, so being able to really navigate, you know, the, the world of the technological future of databases as they currently stand, um, it can be tricky. It can be very much a labyrinth and we don't want you to get frustrated or upset or have any struggles. So our goal at the library is to make sure that you develop the researching skills that will help you not only in school, but as you progress through your career as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and go to the next slide. 
and that was me. So any questions that come up about the library, feel free to reach out via our chat button or any, you know, any of those uh, communication options at the top right side. And we're just, we're so happy to have everyone here. So with that, I will pass it on. Thank you. All right, I am not Allie. I am back. I am Mandy. Um, oh, James, you ruined my pop quiz. That's all right. That's all right. Um, so if you go back a slide, James, um, I was going to quiz you all and see how many alumni you think that we had at SNHU throughout the world. You may have seen it really quick, so you may have the answer already in the chat. Um, but what guesses do you think? That we have for alumni, not only in campus, but in online all around the world. All right, I see 40K, I see 277K. Someone may have seen the answer. Um, yep, yeah, okay, you can go to the next slide, slide, James. The answer is 227,000 and counting which is crazy. So again, we have alumni from all over the world, all over the country, um, in different pockets of the United States and the world, like I said. Um, they are from campus, they are from online, they are from undergraduate, graduate, competency base, but this number continues to grow year over year, which is very exciting. So next slide, please, James. So I mentioned we have pockets all over the United States and the world. Um, this list doesn't highlight every state here. I assure you we have students in every single state <laughs> in the United States and like I said in multiple countries. But this slide highlights our most populous areas for alumni. So as you can imagine, East Coast has a large number of our graduates, but look, we've got California, we've got Texas, we've got Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York. There are so many other pockets of our alumni and a lot of these alumni also build community where they are and may host events. California is a big, big um, advocate for engagement and events as an alumni. Um, Houston has been a big pocket for alumni as well. So this is just a map of where we have a large number of alumni. However, you do. Even if your state is not highlighted here, I promise you there are students and alumni in those states as well because we are continuing to grow. Um, so James, next slide, please. All right, so how can you give back to SNU as an alumni? You can mentor a student, you can donate to scholarships, you can hire SNHU students and interns, you can become a brand advocate, you can share your story, um, you could come back and present at a leadership conference, uh, you can contribute to the student experience, you can grow a regional community. Like I mentioned, uh, California and Texas have a big population of alumni uh, communities. So there's many ways that even though you may graduate from SHU and you've moved that tassel over and you have your degree, you can still participate and be active as a member of our alumni community, which is very exciting. It doesn't always end um, once you finish your degree. Next slide, please. All right, so the alumni engagement team also partners with colleagues across SNHU to help deliver opportunities. So I mentioned there's some professional conferences, there's career development. Um, they partner with us on our fall leadership conference for campus and our leads leadership conference for current online students. So there's a lot of different ways to continue to network and be involved. Like I said, even when your SNHU journey ends, um, we oftentimes have a lot of alumni that come back and be keynote speakers, present at conference, present Sent at webinars. So if you want to be involved as an alumni or be on the alumni board, you can do that. Um, and we have a lot of students, whether they're campus or online, who remain very involved once they've graduated. Next slide, please. Oh, homecoming, that's coming up. So at SNHU, homecoming is a university-wide celebration that honors the past and embraces the future. That is our, our tagline for that event. So with this event, alumni, students, families, faculty, friends of the university come together. They are in person and there are virtual events throughout homecoming weekend. And I believe that weekend is October 13th this year. So mark your calendars because there will be some virtual events available if you live in the area and want to come to campus and participate in some events, you absolutely can do. But I know in the past they've had a virtual paint night, they've had homecoming bingo, they've had homecoming tours that are virtual. Um, so even if you do not live locally, that does not mean you do you can't participate in homecoming. And like I said, you could be an alumni, a student, family, faculty, staff, it doesn't matter. Um, you are able to participate in homecoming. So that happens yearly in October, October, and that website gives you more information that's on the slide right there. Next slide, please. 
Global Days of Service. So that happens every spring. Another event that our um, alumni office um, hosts and um, gathers information on and gathers volunteers for. So it is a month long community service celebration where alumni, students, faculty, staff come together to strengthen communities. So oftentimes, even as a student or an alumni, you may say, all right, I live in Houston. I see that's been in the chat. I want to try to get an event where people get together and help at a food pantry, or I live in Tampa and I want to organize an event where people clean up the beach. So you would work with the alumni office if you have an idea in order to give back to the community during global services to pitch that event. See if it's something that other folks are interested in um, and you could get together and do something that contributes to global service. It doesn't even have to be a big event. I know during global days of service, I will walk the streets of my neighborhood and pick up trash and share my story about doing that. So global days of service is just a way for the entire SNHU community to give back in a way. So that is coming in spring of 2024. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. Next slide, please. So is it worth staying connected? We think so. The alumni team thinks so, but only if you want to. Again, another optional thing for you. Um, you can gain professional contacts and alumni network of over 227,000 alumni of accomplished leaders and change makers. You can attend fun events with fabulous people and share your Penman pride. Like James mentioned, that is our mascot, the Penman. Um, you can tap into a pipeline of talented interns and future employees, and you can contribute to the success of current and future SNHU students. Like I said, I am not a member of the alumni team, but I do work with them very hands on, and they are always willing to chat and get connected and on that page there's a multiple different ways that you can connect so there's a facebook page a twitter instagram linkedin um, so make sure that you get involved and get connected um, and you can start as a current student you can check out what it's like but as soon as you're done doesn't mean you have to be done with connecting you can be involved as an alumni so next slide please all right i think that's you melanie it is me hey y'all you get me twice in one day. Um, show of emojis, how many of you all are taking IDS 105 or SNHU 107? I'm, I'm waiting for the emojis. Let me see them. Lots of you guys. Awesome. Okay. Well, one of the things I wanted to mention, like Amanda has talked so much about, is in SNHU Connect, there's so many ways to really connect yourself to the university clubs, organizations, and so much in there. But if you're taking IDS 105 or SNU 107, when you start classes, we actually have specific learning communities for those two classes. Um, so once you get access, remember, if you just registered, it can take a week or so to get your SNHU Connect access, so don't stress. Um, it's coming. But once you get in there, you want to look for whatever the class is that you might be taking. If you're taking IDS 105 or SNHU 107, the learning community is actually, there's spaces outside of your classroom environment where you can get to know students that are taking that class just like you are. I'm the only faculty member that's in there, so it's mostly just all students um, and some alumni that pop back in there from time to time to share their, their experiences, but it's all about those peer connections and getting to know each other. Plus, I hold webinars both for SNHU 107 and IDS 105. Some of them are live, like they're coming up here in a couple of weeks, the 23rd and 24th of August, so the week before you start classes, save those days, um, at 7 o'clock at East Coast at night, there's a live session that kind of just gets you started for your first couple of classes. Lets you know what to expect in SNU 107 or IDS 105, goes through like how to click on things, how to find things in your classroom. So those live webinars are super awesome, but I also have them in an on-demand or pre-recorded format. From week to week, there's videos and webinars that you can watch that'll tie into what you're doing in your classroom as far as the course concepts, the assignments, and just kind of walk you through the class and what's happening from week to week. So pay attention to those webinars. There's also just-in-time resources, which are short little focus videos, things like how to find the template for an assignment. How do I upload it? Like things about how do I start my first discussion board? What is this concept a little bit more about? They're just quick little videos to help you just really hone in on the assignments or the topics from week to week. All of this in the learning community, those videos, those webinars, being active in the learning community are all completely optional. 
There's nothing graded. There's nothing required, but it's a really great space outside of your classroom just to get some of those extra support and connect you to the university, but also help you get to know other students with just ultimately everything equals your success. So if you're taking IDS 105 or SNH 107, remember to look for those learning communities. You will see email reminders, you will see announcements posted from your faculty about the webinars or helpful videos. And if you ever have questions about it, you can always email me. I'm in the community um, and I'm happy to help because we're just really excited to have you all here. And those two classes are going to get you started on the right foot for your SNH2 journey. Go ahead, James. I'm going to turn it over to you, Kat. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you all for coming and hanging out with us today. There's been so much like excellent information that's already been shared, so I'll try to be brief. Um, SNHU has so many great resources that are available to students, and I'm super excited to talk to you all about the Peer Mentor Program and how we can support new learners throughout their first year. I'm Kat. I'm an SNHU alumni. I earned my bachelor's in forensic psychology in 2019, my MS in 2020, and I've been a peer mentor for first year students at SNHU since 2018. Right now, I'm seven credits and a dissertation defense away from completing my doctor of psychology, and I've done all of this as an online student. So, the first thing we're usually asked by new students is what is a peer mentor and what can they do for me? The simple answer is that a peer mentor is a person who takes their lived experiences and then shares them with someone new to the experience while empowering them, providing support and building a solid rapport. And one of the coolest things about peer mentoring is the student benefits of participating in the program. And so benefits can include improved communication skills, a deeper connection to the university and other students, increased confidence in your academic ability, increased success, the um, opportunities to network with your peers, motivation to complete goals, and becoming a successful self-directed learner. If you are not sure what a self-directed learner is, that's someone who can set goals for themselves, take initiative, and follow through. So these students usually accept the responsibility and accountability for their academic success, and they're able to better take control of their learning processes. Um, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. So some of the ways that the peer mentor team can benefit you all as new students at SNHU are through nurturing the development of skills that you will use throughout your academic journey, and that can include goal setting and developing strategies for achieving your goals. We can talk you through study tip ideas, time management plans. We meet you where you are and share experiences. We can help locate resources that you need, and we're able to normalize and validate the anxieties of being a new student. And then we'll send out periodic emails just to check in on you and to maintain rapport and accountability. And then, um, as you can see on the slide, there are reports and increases in productivity. Mentees are more likely to graduate. And there is a citation at the bottom when the video is emailed. Um, can we go to the next slide? So what should you do as a mentee? So as a mentee, you should focus on taking full advantage of the opportunity connect to connect with your mentor. And it doesn't matter 
If you're attending live one-on-one -on -one sessions, drop in office hours, or if you're just keeping in touch with us through email. This is how you'll be able to reap the benefits that mentoring offers you. Be present, work closely with your mentor during the first few sessions, and you will work to identify your initial goals, both academically and developmentally, find a consistent schedule and plan for communicating with your mentor, and then be willing to have the hard conversations with your mentor. We're here to listen to you and to help. Ask your mentor for feedback and apply it. And then the biggest piece is stay committed. Can we please go to the next slide? So if you want to connect with a peer mentor and you have not received a form to fill out requesting to be matched, you can email peermentors at snhu.edu and ask for the initial peer mentoring survey. After you complete that, you can head over to SNU Connect to the new Student Connections Learning Community and introduce yourself to your peers. After we receive your completed survey, you'll be matched with someone from our team and your peer, your peer mentor will then reach out to you via email to provide you with a link you can use to schedule your one-on-one -on -one session. Our sessions are hosted right here on Microsoft Teams and they allow us to chat face-to-face -face about your experiences and how to be successful. It has been a pleasure chatting with you all today, and I look forward to seeing you all thrive as you work towards your degrees. Remember, we're behind you and you've got this. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Kat. Um, it's always great to hear from students and former students about their experiences and uh, Kat's done a phenomenal job of engaging students and making sure that they get the support that they need um, as they go through uh, this experience. So definitely uh, reach out to the peer mentors. Um, that email address is there. Uh, some of you might receive a link via email. I, as mentioned, if not, just email that that um, address peer mentors at snhu.edu and we'll get you connected with someone who can help ease the stress a little bit and uh, kind of assist you in that navigation. So I want to say just thank you to all the presenters that were here today uh, and providing all the different um, explanations of the various support systems that that reside here at SNHU for you and this online institution. So as you can see, there's a lot, you know, and this is only some of what's available to you. And one thing I do want to reiterate that many have already stated, uh, these services are just at your disposal um, as a student. So make sure that you take full advantage of them um, and, and make sure that you uh, take part in all that SNHU has to offer. But to this point, I want to make sure that I get your feedback. Uh, your feedback is valuable. We want to know um, what you took out of this uh, session. Uh, so the, uh, this QR code, if you can, uh, if you can pull out your phones, if you're on your phone, I'll try to see if I can drop that in the, in the chat if possible, uh, but want you to uh, fill out this survey and just provide your quick feedback. And we would greatly value that uh, to get a gauge of what were some of the highlights um, of the workshop or what were some of the things that you may have felt like um, you still have questions about. So that can be addressed in some other uh, ways of engagements that we have uh, at SNHU. But once again, so proud of you all. Uh, you're gonna have a great journey uh, reach out to your advisors, reach out to your instructors. Uh, and as mentioned, it doesn't matter if you are a military veteran. It doesn't matter if you are a first generation college student like myself or Mandy. We all have made it through and have done um, done really good things and you can do the same. So uh, we know that everyone's goals are different um, and we respect that. We respect the uh, diversity that resides here at this institution among all of you all and want you to know that there is a place here for you at SNHU. So thank you all so much. And this uh, session is being recorded as mentioned, and it will be sent out uh, to individuals who are unable to attend, or if you just want to 
you know, have the opportunity to review uh, what was submitted, you can definitely do that as well. But thank you all uh, for your time and engaging with us and best of luck in your uh, upcoming term at SNHU.